I'm peaceful. I'm loving. But I'm not like the others. I am not. I'm not like the others, and I will not fall in line with the others. When they're saying, this is normal, what you walked into is normal, what we built here is normal, and your reaction to it is wrong, that's not normal. No. No. Netflix's Ozark is pretty much one of the best TV shows around at the moment. It has this dark, bluey, ominous colour palette that seems to somehow drag you deeper into the world of the Navarro drug cartel, much like what actually happens to the Bird family. It includes, honestly, incredible performances from all of its cast, most notably Laura Linney, Julia Garner and Jason Bateman, as the Bird family try to stay alive while laundering drug money. In season one, the show was still finding its feet and treading carefully not to just become another Breaking Bad spin-off. With subsequent seasons, Ozark has ruthlessly and violently found its own voice and identity, with each episode tangling the knot just that little bit more and each character slowly slipping down deep into the vast well of the criminal underworld. It's hard to look away. There are many areas I could look at today, the plot, the character development, the cinematography. Instead, I want to look at one tool that the show uses so effectively that brings audiences right into each character's psyche. Spoilers ahead. Season three introduces Wendy's brother, Ben Davis, played by Tom Pelfrey. Ben is somewhat a loose cannon that the show introduces to apply pressure from within the Bird family's slick operation. When we first see him, he completely loses his temper with his students and subsequently throws all of their phones into a wood chipper and then assaults a passerby. I bet you're fucking looking at me now! Whoa. This is probably not the sort of person you want hanging around you when you're breaking the law and trying to blend into the background. However, when he arrives, while it's a strain on Marty and the operation, it's not something they can't deal with. You see, we soon learn that Ben suffers from bipolar disorder and he can't stop these violent outbursts unless he has his medication, which at the beginning of the season he is taking. Ben is a troubled character though and a romance with Ruth provokes him into wanting to come clean. While he can be dangerous, he just simply isn't himself when on the medication. Later on, Ben, this guy, the guy we judged when we first saw him assault a passerby is judging us, the viewer. He sees what the Bird family are doing and what Wendy and Marty are involving their kids in. They play happy family and for the most part we as an audience are happy to just watch as Jonah and Charlotte are involved in a drug cartel. Ben sees this and rightly so is not happy with it, but unfortunately now off of his medication what follows is a breakdown. So I said I wanted to discuss the editing, so why am I bringing all of this up? Well, episode 9 of season 3, Fire Pink, includes some of the best editing I've seen this year, and it rightly so was nominated for best editing at this year's Emmys. And it's important for you to understand the headspace Ben is in at this point. A J-cut and L-cut is an editing technique used by editors to help ease one scene into the next. For a J cut, the audio from the next shot or scene will begin before the visual does. This results in a brief overlap where the audio begins on the previous shot. Wendy has identified a casino and hotel in northwest Missouri that needs an influx of cash to survive. I have seen and an L cut is the same, just reversed. That's why they get the name J and L cut. I'll wake up, I'll just flash to that. Me, not you. In my warm bed. Roof over my head. <laughs> In my warm bed, roof over my head. Fire Pink starts with this beautifully performed monologue from Tom Pelfrey as his character slowly breaks down. The editors could have cut the scene very safely by relying on the fantastic acting Tom displayed. Instead, they opted to use multiple drawn-out J-cuts that took the scene and performance to a whole new level. Usually when we think of a J-cut, we think of a few frames or even a second or two. These J-cuts? Well, take a look. I can never do that. Thank you for your service. 
Did you ever wake up in the middle of the night, play out the worst possible scenario? Like you're driving your car and a kid comes out of nowhere on a bike. One of them scooters, you smack into that kid, the kid dies. The good part of your life is over. He loses it. Another day goes by. I lie in my bed, cry about killing the kid on the scooter or a homeless marine or my father dying. My father's not a good person, but I imagine him there at the end. These J cuts are 14, 6 and 5 seconds long respectively. As Ben looks out the window with his conscience pouring out, we look directly back from the other side. However, what we see is his fractured psyche, each thought connected but seemingly detached. Ben is having a breakdown and thanks to the editing choices made, we the audience can physically see and feel this fracture, allowing us to stand directly in his shoes. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of video. This is new for me, um, but I'm going to try and do a few more bits like this, so click like and press subscribe if you did enjoy it. Um, also leave a comment and tell me what you thought, it'd be nice to hear some thoughts and have a conversation.